Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, just one, a few points of housekeeping. Everyone is attending the webinar today in listen-only mode. We will make available the PowerPoint presentation and webinar recording on our QCDR webpage following today's presentation. Uh, this Today's webinar is brought to you as a second webinar in our series that we're offering for registry participants as well as new, um, new sites or facilities that's interested in um, using registry reporting for PQS. Today's uh, topic is navigating your QCDR feedback reports. One of the uh, primary benefits of using a QCDR is the ongoing feedback that you receive after you submit data to us. Today's um, speaker for Today's session will be Deborah Prius and Gupta. She's a manager um, and also her focus is on data analytics in our quality management programs. I'll turn it over to her to begin. Thanks, Alicia. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so let's um, uh, get started. We have a lot to cover. Uh, what we will cover? We will cover uh, data submission requirements for respective registries, DIR, GRADE, NMD, LCSR, as well as CTC. Um, and um, I will touch base on the data submission through for the PQRS measures as well. Um, understand report features and navigating the NRDR portal. And uh, mostly QCDR feedback reports for data that we, you submitted. And we have a poll, and Zach is going to administer the poll. Let's see. Did you participate in NRDR? The options are, yes, I participated in NRDR, but not for CMS reporting. Yes, I participated in NRDR and used it for CMS reporting. No, I am a first-time user. The poll is open now, so please make your choice and let us know. We will be, um, we will let you let you know the results in a minute. Looks like about seventy one percent of the votes are in, so okay. we'll allow a few more seconds. So 16% uh, say, yes, I participated in NRDR, but not for CMS reporting. 53% uh, are first-time user, and 31% uh, participated in NRDR, and also for CMS reporting. <clears throat> OK. So. Um, Uh, beginning in 2014, the NRDR was approved as Qualified Clinical Data Registry by CMS. And in this slide, you can see all the uh, registries that support uh, non-PQRS measures, non-PQRS supported measures. Um, these are the measures that are supported by the databases that NRDR, our National Radiology Data Registry has. Uh, CT colonography registry that has two measures. Uh, National mammography data database has six. Dose index registry has six. Grade or general radiology improvement database has six. And lung cancer screening registry has three measures. And um, for uh, NMD or National mammography database and lung cancer screening registry, 2016 participation relies on 2015 data because for those two registries we need one year of follow-up data. Mm -hmm. Benefits of using a QCDR. So um, there are many benefits um, that uh, benefits of using QCDR for submitting your CMS and data. Um, the, there is greater potential to meet the 9.3 reporting requirements. Participants can simplify reporting using GPRO. You can meet multiple requirements or needs, and those are listed here. 
support better outcome under the value modifier program using QCDR uh, quality scores. And um, lastly, the feedback reports. As you participate in the uh, QCDR registries, you will receive quarterly benchmarking reports, national benchmarks, and comparison provide objective assessment of performance. So how to get started? Consider measures that we would report in order to reach the required nine measures across three nas national quality strategy domains for individual uh, physician, uh, individual eligible physici uh, physicians or physician group practices, uh, which is uh, GPRO. <clears throat> registry participants, as a registered participant, you can choose a combination of PQRS and non-PQRS measures for successful PQRS participation. You do not need to submit data through all of the databases. You just need to uh, choose the databases that support the measures relevant, relevant to a practice. Data may be submitted later in the 2016 retrospective to January 1st, 2016, but we highly recommend you to uh, uh, submit data continuously and um, early to uh, take the advantage of the reports, feedback reports that we provide. If your facility or a facility at uh, which you practice are currently submitting to data to NRDR, monitor your data submission and select any additional registries from which you may want to report measures for QCDR. Um, if you are interested in using the QCDR, you must complete a new facility registration form. And um, there is a link, uh, www.acr.org slash QCDR. You can go to that link to learn more about registration, data summation, and report generation. And we have some educational material posted there. How to submit data. PQRS measures are submitted via physician portal using um, this follow following documents that are listed here, but these documents are uh, will be modified in the coming weeks to accommodate the group practices uh, submitting QRS measures data to the uh, QCDR. Um, most of the data elements listed will be required. And non-PQRS measures that are submitted through the relevant registry processes, uh, DIR, GRID, NMD, CTC, and LCSR. Data submission table, uh, most of you um, are probably very uh, used to this table. If, uh, um, if you go to the link below, you will get, uh, get a, a very nice table that summarizes all the ways you can submit the data um, for PQRS measures as well as non-PQRS measures. For non-PQRS measures, uh, which we will focus mainly in this webinar, um, I will go uh, through the data submission for individual registries. PQRS measure su submission. Um, you need to log in as a physician in the physician portal and um, you will see a box like left hand side. You click data collection and reports. And then you can upload the uh, upload your data or your, your data file that you have. Um, you can download the PQRS measure data template as um, is highlighted in the uh, lower uh, circle. And this is a um, screenshot of uh, the uploaded files. After you upload the files, and it shows the uh, status is successful um, and number of records in the files, so on and so forth. You will all, after you upload the files, you are able to see a summary of the measures and this screenshot uh, shows only non-PQRS measures, but um, it, you will, if you, if you submit PQRS and non-PQRS measures, for your facility, you will be able to see all of your measures in this uh, screen. So PQRS and non-PQRS measures, both are uh, viewable here. Non-PQRS measures of submission.
So we will start with DIR or those index data registry, those, those, those index registry uh, for 2017 reporting. Uh, 2017 reporting mean, means the data for 2016 that we are going to report uh, during 2017. Um, for DIR, all exams are done, uh, all exams done in 2016, January through December. Uh, DICOM data is automatically transmitted to DIR databases using ACI provided prior software. Now it is possible, many people ask this question, um, uh, if it is possible for our databases to accept retrospective data, the answer is yes, but we highly recommend you to submit early and often to optimize the benefit of seeing performance scores throughout the year. Also for DIR, if you are submitting retrospective data uh, for several months, um, we suggest that you contact us prior to do it prior so that we can schedule it, um, the, the transmission of the data um, in a uh, weekend or so when um, the systems are not so overloaded, otherwise um, it might not be successful due to volume. All physicians associated with facility team will get credit for DIR. And DIR offers six non-PQRS measures. Here is a list of um, the uh, DIR non-PQRS measure. You can see ACRAD 9 through ACRAD 14. And um, measures calculated at facility are group level teen NPI with red assigned to all physicians within the facility group uh, who interpret CT exams. There are some prerequisites for uh, successful uh, participation in DIR non-PQRS measures. Exams must be mapped to a RADLEX playbook ID or PID because we cannot, uh, for comparison purposes, we need to standardize all the exams and um, for that mapping is a prerequisite. So if you, if you do not have mapped exams, we cannot submit those exams as a measure. This is very, very important. To claim ACRAD 10 and ACRAD 12, which are SSDE measures or site-specific dose estimate measures, localizers or scouts must be sent to DIR because for us um, to be able to calculate SSDE, we need to know the uh, size of the patient which we calculate from localizers, the AP and anteroposterior and lateral diameters and then we apply a formula to compute the SSDE. So if you are trying to claim ACRAD 10 and ACRAD 12, we have to make sure that you, we are getting localizers from your facility. As per participation agreement, you agree to send us all CT scan data done your, in your facility even though CMS requires only 50% of your data. So um, all patients, Medicare and non-Medicare patients, and for all exams, we, uh, we, we expect you to send all exams for DIR. Um, DIR QCDR preview reports uh, are part, preview reports are part of DIR executive summary um, PDF reports in semi-annual reports. Q1, quarter one, uh, or January to March, and Q3 or July to, sep uh, July to September Q3 reports are generated uh, separately. Um, and this is a schedule of the reports for DIR. GRID um, is General Radiology Improvement Database. And now we are going to discuss how we can use GRID um, for QCDR. All exams done in 2016, January through December. Data submission must submit exam level data. We cannot um, uh, submit 
uh, QCDR measures for aggregate data. Um, you can do web-based flat file upload and uh, data, the, these uh, specifications are in our website. Also electronic submission through certified vendors or EHR, RIS reporting system or in-house IT department. You can talk to your IT department whether they can uh, make uh, this um, possible for you to transmit data electronically to um, our database. Again, um, I, will, I will say this for each of the registries, it is possible to submit retrospective data, but we highly suggest that you submit it throughout the year. <clears throat> in addition to participating in grid, uh, grid uh, QCDR, if you are submitting in a registry, facility and physician level aggregate data submission is also required. GRID offers six non-PQRS measures, and here is a list of the GRID non-PQRS measures, ACRAD 15 through ACRAD 20, ACRAD 15 to 19 are uh, report turnaround time, and ACRAD 20 is CTIV contrast extravasation rate. Um, this is a schedule for uh, GRID QCDR preview report. For GRID, we have separate PDF reports and year-to-date uh, data is, um, uh, we provide year-to-date data for, for your preview for GRID QCDR and it is generated quarterly and this is the timeline. We'll move to CTC which is uh, uh, which stands for City Colonograph Registry. For CTC, um, all exams done in 2016, January through December, manual submission of data using our web-based forms. Um, and CTC offers two non-PQRS measures. These are two non-PQRS measures from CTC, ACRAD 1 and ACRAD 2. City colonography true positive rate and city colonography clinically significant extracolonic findings. This is a um, timetable for uh, our QCDR preview report. QCDR preview reports are separate PDF reports uh, for uh, CTC uh, year to date generate quarterly. Let's move on to NMD or National Mammography Database and its use uh, for QCDR. It is a little bit different than other databases because it needs uh, one year of uh, follow-up data. For 2017 reporting, all exams done in 2015, January to December, as it requires one year of follow-up data, web-based data upload, Certified vendors can generate NMD compatible files for upload and in-house uh, IT systems may also become certified to submit data to NMD. NMD offers six non-PQRS measures. Here is a list of NMD measures, non-PQRS measures, ACRAD 3 through ACRAD 8. Currently, QCDR measures are included in the semi-annual report for the reports that we issue in June and December. For Q1 and Q3 reports, we issue separate QCDR PDF report. Uh, we are uh, thinking or considering to include QCDR preview reports in NMD aggregate reports in near future. So it will be a part of QCDR reports will be a part of the aggregate reports. This is uh, NMD uh, QCDR report schedule and I, um, I gave you an example of how it uh, looked for 2016. Uh, it is a little bit different. In a, we have two sections. We have one is final and one is preliminary. In the final section, um, it is uh, 
it has the follow-up data. In the preliminary section, we do not have the follow-up data. So, um, sorry. For March 2016 reports, uh, follow-up data is available through March 31st, 2016. And January to March 2016, preliminary data is available in 16, uh, Section 2. Uh, final data will be available 20, 12 months after the exam date. For June 2016 report, uh, it includes uploaded follow-up data through June 30, 2016. And January to June 2016 preliminary or Section 2 report includes uploaded data through June 30, 2016. Um, for September 2016 reports includes uploaded follow-up data through September 30 and January to September 2016 preliminary report and December reports will include section 1 January to December uh, 2015 and January to December 2016 report. Lung cancer screening registry, this is our newest addition in NRDR. For lung cancer, like NMD, we need one year of follow-up. So January to December 2015, all exams done in during that time will be reported for 2016, which we will, we will report in 2017. Data submission, manual submission, web-based flat file upload, as well as electronic transmission using web uh, services and certified vendors. NCSR offers three non-PQRS measures, ACRI 21, ACRI 22, and 23. Um, QCDR preview reports will be generated for each quarter as a part of aggregate, aggregate reports. First QCDR report uh, 2016 Q1 will be released this week or early next week. And this is, um, again, uh, uh, schedule for LCSR QCDR report. It is very similar uh, to NMD report. The only difference is that section one contains the preliminary data, section two contains the um, final data which has a follow-up exam. Where to download? So all these reports that I was talking about, you can download those reports uh, logging into um, NRDR portal. Uh, we email you when the aggregate reports are uploaded. You then you log in using your login and user log username and password to NRDR portal. Um, after logging, you will see under the reports there is an aggregate report option, which you if you click, you you should be able to see a list of the reports available where from where you click the download and you can download the report to your computer. All the facility users should be able to access the report. Now, the part is how to read the QCDR preview report. Understanding the DIR QCDR preview report is the first thing we will discuss. This is a page uh, just before the QCDR uh, page that we have, and it has some information about, uh, about the QCDR. Um, this is page 19 of the executive summary report. And um, this is a screenshot that I took from 2016 Q1, QCDR preview report. You can see the, um, uh, this uh, part, the red uh, highlighted part is the uh, facility, your facility measures year to date. Um, and the next highlighted part, aggregated across the RF facility, this is the registry measure. These are the data submitted to DIR. The, um, we expect you to uh, submit all the exams you've done for 2015 year to date. For AC-14, we expect you to submit all the exams that you have done. And the next one, you can see valid exams submitted. For each of these measures, we will exclude the invalid measures. And um, this is different what makes invalid for each of the measures. For example, um, if you are 
um, submitting SSD exam and we do not have a local license, then that, that is an invalid exam. We cannot calculate SSD. So you can see the exam submitted is more uh, number, numbers are more than um, valid exams submitted. So how to read this report? Um, I need to tell you one thing that uh, from this report you cannot predict how much uh, adjustments you will uh, you will get or how much uh, you know upward or downward downward adjustments you will get. So what you can is whether you are in the right direction. You can make sure that you are going in the right direction and um, how you are comparing to the registry. And the reason for this is, this is a, a, the aggregate across DIO facilities, the second, the last columns, two columns that you see, are assuming that everyone submitting data to DIR are also participating in um, same as um, the QCDR, but uh, we will not know until uh, the end of the year who actually participated. Not all, everyone that participates in registry also participates in QCDR. So the measure, uh, performance measure mean and the standard deviation that you are seeing for the last two columns might not match exactly um, when we submit the data or, or with what CMS calculates. But, um, you can make sure that you are in the right direction. For city head brand without RBCon DLP is at nine. You can see that um, the facility performance median is around 920, and the performance uh, measure mean is 869, which is about 51 uh, difference, um, which is not more than 380, uh, 311. So for uh, DIR, all the measures except the last one, AC that 14, are inverse measure. That means the lower your score is better, lower your dose index is better. So as long as you are in the right direction, you should be good. So if you see that you are do going in the wrong direction and way, way, um, you know, far away from registry mean, then uh, th that is something you need to take consideration into and, and look into how you can improve. So that's how you should be using the uh, DIR and um, DIR and all, all other registry uh, reports that we provide. For all the measures in DIR, these are all continuous measures. For grid. Um, GRID is also um, it's, uh, similar to um, DIR, all the measures are continuous measure. Um, AC at 15 or turnaround time radiography includes mammography and turnaround time ultrasonography excludes breast ultrasonography. Um, and these are all inverse measure as well. The smaller is the better. CTC, you can see um, in this uh, QCDR report, we give you all the measures, but actually the um, ACRAD 1 and 2 are listed in the bottom two measures. And um, we do not have the standard deviation here, but you can compare your facility and actually your physician to the CTC registry. And see how their percentages compare to the registry percentages, whether it is going the other way or it is going in the same direction or how far it is. And from there you can make out whether you are in the right track or not. I'm not going to go through uh, the NMD measures um, one by one. Um, I just want to uh, want to make two uh, important notes uh, that is at five and PQS 146. These are negative measures, and all other measures are positive measures. Mean means larger number is better, 
Uh, also, for all the NMD measures, these are percentage measures. And also, we have the rate. We, for this position, we have the rate, but we do not have um, the standard deviation yet. We are planning to add that in the near, near future. Um, this is a made up uh, NPI and made up facility, but um, your facility report should um, look very similar to it. Likewise, um, the LCSR report, we did not upload it yet, but we will be uploading it very, um, very soon. Uh, we have three measures, ACLAD 21, 22, and 23. Um, these are also the percentage, also all are percentage measure, measures just like NMD measures. And uh, you can see the physician measures are compared to the LCSR registry, mean rate, and standard deviation. So mean rate is uh, calculated for all the physicians for that, um, for 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 registry, all physicians who participated in the registry. Cost to participate. In addition to an earlier participation fee, for ACL members we have $199 uh, per physician per year and for non-members we have $499 per physician per year. Um, if you go to our website uh, and click in, into quality and safety and in our DR data registry, um, then you can click into the PQRS or qualified clinical data registry page. This is what it looks like. And there is a lot of information posted there. I highly encourage you to go in there and look into all the materials that we have posted for your convenience. Here are some of the resources to help you participate. And uh, these are also posted in our website. Um, so we have a lot uh, of webinars that are upcoming also posted in the webinar. These are also posted in our webinar. You can go in and register for whichever um, webinar you, you think uh, you are interested in. With that, I conclude my webinar, and we are open for questions. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this webinar. So, um, and Alicia is going to help me. Alicia and we have my friend Judy who will help uh, help me to answer the question. Hi everyone! Thanks for your active participation in today's session. If you could go ahead and submit any questions you have, we know we covered a lot of ground, but just when with the poll um, responses, we realized that a majority of the participants this is your first time using uh, the registry for PQRS reporting, so or you have not used it, and so we know it's a lot of information to cover. But we talked about you know data submission requirements and everything that we have as prevention is on our website. Most of the questions that have come in already, we have um, went ahead and answered. Just um, let's go ahead, let's and, go read ahead and, re and reread them. Um, one of the questions is regarding the NMD registry. If we report retrospective 2015 data and all of 2016 data, um, can we claim credit for 2016 PQRS reporting? So that's a, that's a common question. Um, I can just go ahead and answer and say yes, but Priya, do you mind elaborating? Yeah, so for, um, that means we find. So if you uh, submit 2015 retrospective data and um, submit the data as you go on for 2016, uh, so when we report in 2017, we will have um, at least one year of follow-up data, and um, that's what, exactly what we need. So that that should be fine. And that, and just also for everyone that's on the call, the NMD registry is what we're referring to now, but also the lung cancer screening has a uh, yeah, similar exactly. request for 2015 data. Another question related to if we are already reporting to the dose index registry, do we need to complete a file upload in QCDR? Uh, 
So no, not really. So if you have been participating in the DOSIMICS registry and you've been submitting data on an ongoing basis, mapping your exam, sending us localizers, you're really all set. In fact, you probably have your first quarter KCBR report already. Yeah. You just probably need to go in and check the PQRS option in the form. And if you did not submit the item num, then you need to do so, it. Yeah. So if you're asking about how do you sign up for the QCDR component of it, we'll refer you back to Alicia's webinar that occurred previously. And the recording's available on the website, and it walks you through all the those steps. Yeah. Sure, and just a short answer for that, if you're already participating in a registry, which it looks like about 31% of you are, all you need to do is modify your registration to include PQRS measure participation. Um, you're already giving us the data. We just need a few more um, steps about, of course, who your physicians are, which facilities they read for, and then most importantly, which your group's text ID number. Uh, for CMS, they analyze all claims at the MPI and your text ID number, so we would need that information. But it's a simple checkbox that will take you um, less than two minutes to complete. Uh, just to answer the next question, will this webinar be available offline? Yes, we do plan to post the uh, webinar recording as well as presentation slides on our QCDR webpage. Uh, we have actually uh, posted all previous webinars that we've held both this year and last year. So feel free if it's your first time, you want more information about this process, you can look there. It should be, give us about early next week, um, since tomorrow's Friday, give us about by Tuesday the recording and slides should be available. Uh, the next question, what is the benefit of registering our, um, registering our group via GPRO? So Priya did um, open it up and, and mention that individual and group reporting is available if you use our QCDR, and we're going to have Judy Burleson elaborate on the, some of the benefits of doing that. Um, that's a great question because we are very encouraged by the ability for QCDR participants to use um, to report as under the group practice reporting option. This very much simplifies um, the reporting burden and uh, will enable many more uh, NPIs under their group to be successful. So as a, as a GPRO participant, you would meet the, need to meet the nine measures, three domain requirements across the entire group versus each individual participant in the registry and the um, PQRS program. So if you um, have 20 people in your group and you report um, nine measures across those 20 individuals, um, or you report nine measures in three domains, even if there are um, six people in the group who don't have nine measures that are reported for them, as a group, everyone in that tax ID number will be successful. And we found in 2014 and 2015 that many, uh, this is particularly helpful in meeting the national quality strategy domain requirements. We found in the past two years that many groups, uh, many individuals had way, way, uh, well over nine measures um, available for submitting to CMS, but had difficulty meeting the three domain requirement. Many of the measures in our QCDR are patient safety or um, care coordination. So in some cases, it was difficult for some individual physicians to meet that domain requirement. But uh, if you're reporting as a group and you can meet and you can report measures across three domains, then everyone in your group will be successful. Thank you for that um, explanation. And then if anyone is looking to um, participate as a group via the GPRO um, option, you have until June 30th. CMS is accepting applications on their website. And if you visit our QCDR page that we referenced earlier, we have a lot of information as far as um, how, to, how to do that, as well as benefits um, and payment implications. Uh, the next question is, uh, we have a physician that is leaving our company. Um, as of August, do you suggest we still report for him? Yes. 
Um, as part of your participation agreement, we require you to report data on all of your patients, which implies all of your physicians. You don't have to report for that physician to um, CMS. You don't have to select them when it comes to the uh, PQRS submission uh, point. And along those lines, I'm not sure which register you're asking about. I assumed you were asking about NCNRDR databases. You may choose to not submit PQRS measures for them. That would be OK. Um, for all of our new year databases, our primary role is to help you improve your quality and be reported the level of visibility. So for all of the NRDR databases, for the non-PQRS measures, we do require data on all of your patients. Thank you. Next question, and then Judy, um, feel free to answer this. We submitted 2015 data and found out subsequently that as an IDTS, independent testing facility, we are exempt from PQRS. Should we continue to submit data to the QCDR? Um, it, well, it couldn't hurt um, if, if you're already uh, doing it and you're benefiting from the, the feedback report. Um, and you want to continue, uh, there's really no um, downside to that. Um, I hesitate to not submit it to CMS because there's been, um, their processes haven't been exactly consistent <laughs> with the IDTF. Um, I know some groups that are IDTF and didn't submit and did receive an informal or did receive a penalty letter for previous years. Um, and I know that's not a good answer, but just to be safe, I would um, continue to submit. That is a question that we haven't had answer for the uh, merit-based incentive payment system for MIPS that begins January 27th or it's proposed to begin January 2017. Uh, I think it may be the same case, but we don't know about that. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question about how can I find out more information about group reporting. If you go to acr.org slash qcdr, we have information on the top of the screen for that. Um, next question, we have a physician. Oh, we already answered that, sorry. <laughs> Uh, does group reporting require a cross-cutting measure be reported if any members of the group see patients face-to-face? -face? Not when you're using a QCDR. That is a requirement for GPROs using a qualified registry when they do have individual, well, if across the group they have 15 instances of a evaluation and management code that's used in the cross-cutting denominator, uh, the cross-cutting measure denominators. But if you're using the QCDR, that is not a requirement. Thank you. And it looks like that's all the questions we have. Still have a few more minutes before the call ends. If I just wanted to mention something while we're waiting for other questions, yeah. particularly since there's a number of individuals, uh, folks on the webinar that are new to um, the registry. Just to let you know that when um, our when your reports are available, when we notify you that the reports are available, we conduct uh, individual webinars per database to talk about your reports. So you'll get much more information about the uh, database report itself if you attend those webinars. So I would encourage you to do that as well. Yeah, and, and some of the webinars, uh, we also have recorded webinars from from past uh, for each of the databases. So feel free to go in and see the webinars. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have any more unanswered un questions. So keep the questions coming. I guess at any point we're happy to answer your questions by email. Yes, and take a look at the list of webinars that we have scheduled throughout the year and let us know what you think about that. If there's a topic that you don't think we're addressing through those or if you have suggestions of what we might cover for each of those webinars, we would appreciate your input. 
With that, I guess we'll say thank you to Priya for presenting today's content, webinar slides, and the recording will be available in a few days. Thanks for your participation.